Okay, next up, let's talk about Black Myth Wukong. Um, there was a recent preview beat. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't make it to that, but um, NVIDIA has announced uh, further details about its marketing tie-up. It looks as though we are indeed going to be getting full RT uh, in this really exciting game. A blog post from NVIDIA this week, which showed, well, a single asset, which seemed to be a screenshot showing, uh, well, described as RTX on off. And we also saw some benchmarks, which um, people are saying look pretty, pretty heavy. But I'm yeah. looking at the looking at the graphing now, and it kind of looks as expected for a full path tracing game. But Alex, what do you think about this? Let's uh, talk about the asset first of all. Oh, oh yeah, sure. So with regards to the asset, I think Oliver can also say something about this. the The full RT mantra and our path tracing that Nvidia talks about has so far that we've seen it in games that are not really UE five ones. And uh, so for something like Alan Wake 2, they already had RT in the game and then they extended it so that all lighting, uh, for the most part, is done via RT. And that in, that requires a certain amount of like intensity. It's very expensive to run. It also requires some things behind the scenes on the engine side to get it working. And in this screenshot here, uh, two of them from Black Myth Wukong, uh, there's one with the typical rendering from UE5, so it's probably Lumen and VSMs for shadows combined with Nanite if it's using proper UE5. And then whatever the NVIDIA RTX renderer is, including things like you can see it on the water. I think that's the the larger difference uh, regarding the water, among other things, is that you can see caustics rendering. So light filtering through the water, like crests and undulating as it filters through on the bottom. It's like the water splits the, the light and it filters through and you can see it like making a shimmer on the bottom of the ground through the back, uh, through the backside of the water. And that's really cool looking. We don't see that too often in games. It's like a hacky way to do it. Uh, but it creates very cool effects. We saw it. I saw it in, uh, in oh my God, Sword and Fairy 7, as well as a couple other titles. So UE4-based titles using that NVIDIA branch. Isn't it they, in that Chernobyl game? Chernobyl. It was also Chernobylite. They used it for, they didn't use it really so much for water usually, but they used it oddly enough for glass a lot, which was really cool. Hmm. Uh, I actually liked that. I, presumably they'll be doing the same thing with Black Myth Wukong in a couple areas of the game, depending on how the art is set up. But another thing it should do is it should change, presumably, how Lumen is done. It'll be using whatever form of Lumen that is the in the NVRTX renderer there, as well as the shadows should now be ray traced instead of shadow map ray tracing, which is, once again, like another hack. Um, but, Oliver, you pointed out some very interesting things about the differences in the lighting in these screenshots. Yeah, I just noticed on like the left hand log, there are two kind of logs that are in the water in this shot. And on the left hand log in the RTX off view, you do see some reflection of the small branches, these very fine branches there. In the RTX on view, not as much. And then on the right hand side on that log, in the RTX on view, the log appears to be the wrong color. It appears white, almost like it's kind of textureless, colorless. And then in the RTX off view, it's reflected in the water with the right color. So, you know, I'm sure Alex will talk about this, but presumably in the RTX off view, we're, we're seeing a screen space reflection here. <laughs> because, yeah. uh, you know, that, that information is on screen um, and that's how Lumen works. So in this case, I'd assume that's SSR information that we're just not getting the RTX on view because presumably there they aren't resorting to any kind of screen space tricks at all. So yeah, that, that is... The point of some interest in these NVIDIA comparisons, sometimes we do know, like I think with Naraka Blade Point a few months ago, right. some omissions in that BVH that maybe are showing up in these comparisons and not flattering as much as you'd think that RTX on view, that, you know, in NVIDIA's new terminology, that full ray traced view, that path traced view. So that's yep. just something to point out. Maybe that maybe that's something they can change or revise ahead of launch, but that is just something to note. Yeah, I think it's important to note because this is our first UE5 title with this full ray tracing using the NVIDIA branch. And the question I've always had with regards to UE5 and implementing ray tracing, path tracing in it, is that uh, Nanite makes it complex to have the full fidelity object on screen 
in the ray tracing view so that that what is usually actually being ray traced against is like a lower fidelity version of the model in software lumen for example it's just like this amorphous blob or it's just not there at all in hardware lumen it's like a low triangular triangle mesh maybe probably not with transparency and then so what the answer the question for me was okay how does nvidia solve this issue do they eat the performance and just have it be like alan wake 2 style where every single thing that is ray traced against is actually the geometry is actually put into the bvh so that you get that one-to-one -one look which is what is necessary for for path tracing to work correctly and be physically accurate all the time or do you have compromises and I'm very curious, based upon the screenshot here, it seems like something isn't right uh, based upon the things that Oliver says. And I don't think that's a good win uh, because when you turn on higher end graphical options, I always feel like they should just improve the image altogether at a performance cost. You shouldn't be finding then bad edge case scenarios or all the time scenarios where it looks worse for some reason. And I think that's usually my like inner thought about higher end settings they shouldn't make the game look worse in some way um i mean i think that makes sense to most people uh, <laughs> uh you're paying all this extra you know performance might as well have it look better for everything uh so here i really do hope this is just some anomaly in the screenshot they put out and that the end you know product whatever it may be does actually have like a really great one-to-one -one geometry that is being ray traced against versus what you can see in the primary view otherwise it kind of makes you know you may get great things like the caustics you may get better indirect lighting you may get technically more accurate shadows but if objects are like missing from them or the reflections like you like you look in a reflection and it's like this like low detail model and it's like okay it, it takes away from the luster, to say the least. And uh, especially if the performance. We can also talk about the performance here, where this actually, performance-wise, it reminds me quite a bit of uh, Cyberpunk, based yeah. upon the everything they've shown here. Like, I imagine the RTX 4090 in 4K DLSS performance mode without DLSS 3 is just, like, right on 60 FPS, based upon this right here because that's why when you it's since it's so gpu limited when you turn on frame gen it isn't a one to one or two to one increase in frame rate they show like around a little bit over 100 fps here with dlss3 frame gen on um so that that puts it right in line with other path trace titles i would say the one thing that i mean i don't like it that they do this in these performance previews these little bar charts is that they include frame generation with the dlss you know the dlss over the previous generation so they show like the 3090 and the 3080 i believe as well in here and they, they just show it with super resolution on and it gives you the a different impression i would say and i don't i think they should always have the bar chart be split yep. they should have it show 100 they should show what it is with super resolution and then maybe the bar graph increases on top of it uh, mm -hmm. with the frame gen. I think that's much more accurate to the, what the consumer expects. Absolutely. Yeah. I think this has been mentioned ad nauseum in the past. And to be fair, in their reviewers' guides, I believe, and in other benchmarks they've done, they have done exactly that, which is to show the increase with super resolution. And then, you know, the bar extends with what frame generation gives you, uh, which kind of makes sense. So one thing, I mean, yeah, um, as I said, there's nothing really surprising from my perspective about um, the benchmarks that are being presented here. Uh, something that does slightly look curious to me if you look at the 1440p um yes. graph that they've got there 3080 and 4070 4070 is typically on par or slightly slower than the 3080 so yeah it looks like there's a lot of heavy lifting either being done by frame generation or by the architectural improvements or or both which is another reason why we kind of need that split bar chart there but the gain that i'm seeing from 3080 to 4070 even factoring in um dlss3 looks quite big yeah say. it reminds me when i did uh the update video on alan wake 2 covering their patch that made it so that the game runs better without mesh shaders. I looked at the performance difference, I believe, between the RTX 3080 and RTX 4070, or maybe I'm actually thinking about my launch video where I did optimize settings. Either way, um, in that I saw that 
with, if you had just rasterization on <clears throat> the 3070 was being beaten out by the 3080 by a little bit. But if you turned on any of the path tracing, I think it was like 30% faster on the RTX 4070. It was some large enough number. It was like 31 FPS versus like 40 or something like that on the 4070 there at 1440p. So if this is that case, then there's a lot of architectural things that make the 4070 way better at path tracing. And I'm hoping that Black myth wukong is using them one thing that i'm very curious like we saw already in games before um the uh opacity micro maps being used which is a way to prevent so in a game when uh there's transparency being traced on screen the way DirectX does it usually is it invokes in any hit shader to test uh, kind of in a non-great hardware accelerated way where on a texture there's like a zero value or a one value to see if it's opaque or not. And this is expensive and invoking it is like awful. And you try and avoid that in games with ray tracing. And opacity micromaps get around that by essentially having, I'm pretty sure, like a higher res like it takes the the places where it would be transparent and it doesn't even include them at all. And it takes the place where it's opaque and it makes actually a geometric mesh out of it. And it tests against that instead. So it doesn't invoke any hit shaders. Basically it makes it faster because it's not having to do some sort of workaround to cover transparency. That's one tech we've already seen right now in Cyberpunk, as well as I'm pretty sure we also see it in Alan Wake 2. But there's another tech that, uh, NVIDIA has that is basically for covering ultra dense uh, geometric models. I want to say it's called DMM. It's another acronym that whose exact words I forget at this very moment <laughs> when I'm trying to say this, but it's basically a model for covering really dense geometric meshes and having them be ray traceable on GPUs. And it only is supported by Ada Lovelace. And we don't, I don't think we've seen that in any game so far. And it seems like a great use case for UE5. Uh, because UE5 has allows for ultra dense meshes geometry via nanite. So I'm curious if this is going to be one of the first games we're seeing that. I'm curious to see, like Oliver pointed out in the screenshot, like, are they going to have it just have like worse aspects when you turn on path tracing? I hope not. You know, there's a lot of things that we're going to only see middle, middle of August. I think this game is an August 20th release. I think it's, I think so. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, so that's like right when games comes around, I hope I get it like a week and a half ahead of time. You know, I'm, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of have a dream, Alex. Yeah. I have a dream. I, I would love to get PC releases. You know, like when you get like a Sony release, like two weeks ahead of time, cause they're so confident in the product. Yep. I would love that if that happened on PC occasionally, yeah. but, but it's usually like I get a day of or something like that. <laughs> Um, I've got one more note of interest about these benchmarks, Alex, which is um, the 4K ones with the higher end GPUs are tested with um, performance mode, seemingly, right. a DLSS performance mode with frame generation. Uh, the 1440p ones are actually on quality mode, um, which basically oh. means that the base resolution for the 4K one would be 1080p. And the base resolution for the 1440p benchmarks on the weaker GPU would be something like, what, 964p or something like that? Around that. So the base resolution isn't actually that <laughs> vastly different. <laughs> I guess uh, uh, performance here is all just like the things that are done at full res at this point. So post-processing. Yeah, that's, that's going to be impactful for sure. But certainly a curious state of affairs. Um, the thing is, 1440p DLSS, as you uh, as you showed in uh, your your recent video, the the you know the balance mode is actually pretty good. It's pretty awesome. In fact, it's so awesome that I after playing all I did all that B roll uh, in 1440p FSR 3.1 balance mode, and I was like, you know, like while playing it on my larger screen, I was like, it doesn't look that great. But then I switched to DLSS, and I was like, oh, this is very smooth presentation. I think. Uh, especially I, I have like the worst case scenario for looking at DLSS at 1440p because it's like a large screen right in front of my face. But I think like if you're on like an average 24 to 27 inch monitor or something like that, you have like a really great 1440p experience there.